who was all bound up that got set free, bought his first Bible. I was sitting along the road, and I called, called my wife, and uh, I stopped at a pay phone and called her on the phone. We didn't have cell phones back then. <laughs> I said, honey, I bought, my, bought myself a Bible, and I'm reading it. I pulled off along the road, and I started singing. I didn't know all the words to Amazing Grace, but I started singing Praise God, Praise God to that tune. And the Lord just filled me with his spirit. I was sitting right in front of where the entrance is to Walmart now in Oakland. There was no road there. I was just sitting alongside the road in my company van. I was just sitting there praising God along the side of the road. And the Lord filled me with his spirit, you know. And, and that, was the, that, that song will always be special to me just because the amazing grace. Found a man, you know, that was all bound up. Set it be free. Still real. Yeah. Still excited to get a new Bible <laughs> because of that. Amen. Children, you can be dismissed today. Uh, youth, too, thank you. Give the praise team a hand. Amen. God's good. Wow. Whew. How many are just glad the presence of the Lord's here? Huh? You know, um, I didn't realize how passionate I was about this subject about anger, I guess still right now a lot, but, you know, I, for everybody on live stream, and I mean, I've been telling people, talking to people on the streets, telling them I was going to do this series on anger, because guess what, we, we live in an angry world, don't we? And I just, I just want to say, first off, I don't come here, um, man, this isn't to bring guilt on anybody, because I've dealt with anger in my life, but it's to bring freedom. I mean, I just pray. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, but I'm a preacher. But I know that the Word of God has a lot to say about anger. And I believe, I, I know that just like Jesus set me free so many times and along that road, that was just the beginning. And I was singing Amazing Grace along the road, and He filled me with His Spirit. And I got my first Bible. It was just the beginning for me of a, of a road of healing, and still is with anger, you know. And, and this topic, um, again, I'm not, honestly, I understand it's a process that we work through and walk through. And let's just be, just be relaxed and allow the Lord to just speak to us, okay? Just allow him to shine his light on our hearts and let him speak to us and bring freedom and help to, to people. Because my motivation is this, is because I just, I just hate to see wounded people. And anger does wound a lot of people. But anger is not sin. It's, a, it's an emotion. And it's how we deal with our anger. You know, it's how we deal with our anger. That's the, that's the issue. So, so why we're, you know, why are we doing this series? Why, like I said, God, this is Christmas time. You know, why would you want me starting a series on anger? And I don't know how far, I'm just going to start unpacking this today. But, you know, I realize it's, it's just so something we all deal with, in, even at this time. You know, we need to pray for people not only that are discouraged during Christmas. It's not Hallmark for everybody. But we need to pray for people who are dealing with anger at Christmas. And, I mean, God confirmed this to me the other day at the checkout line that I'm doing this series, and I thought, I could preach this. This will preach in the dollar store, Walmart, you know what I'm saying, at work or the gas station. This message will preach anywhere because we, we, we live around anger. You know, Zach, Zach got this graphic behind in the, it's the cracked road, and I said, I like that graphic. It's the, it's like the road is broken up, and I said, like a cracked life. And he said, no, I got it because of road rage. <laughs> he said, that's where I got the graphic from was the, the road. And I, he said, somebody cut me off in Morgantown, and you told me you were going to do this series. And I thought that would be a good background was the road, you know, because people get road rage because we all deal with, di with different kinds of anger. Now, I know nobody in here deals with road rage. So <laughs> it's everybody on live stream, right? It's everybody on live stream that deals with road rage. But... None of, us, none of us ever have to get down on our knees tonight and pray, God, please give me more anger tomorrow. Nope. Nobody prays that prayer because we all deal with it, right? Because we all, we all experience it. We don't, we don't ask for it. It grabs us. Anger grabs us, doesn't it? And sometimes we grab other people, but anger grabs us. You know, we can get upset from the beginning when our kids are little. You can get so upset just about your kids getting their shoes on. They're so upset about just getting them all out the door. 
Now, I'm not talking this morning, okay? But just so we can get so upset about the little things in life that, that anger grabs us. We don't, we don't pray for it. We don't ask for it. Some of, us, some of us come into marriages and we both have anger. Some of us, we grow up in homes full of anger, full of, full of people yelling. And, and, and some of us feel insecure because of that. Some of us feel rejected because of the anger that was in our home and all this. And listen, God can heal all this. He can. He can show us how to have right anger or righteous indignation and, and, and do good. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm praying to be the result. I just want to give you some more reasons why we're doing this. Number one, I said we live in an angry world. Proverbs 25, and I think these two scriptures go together. I'll just have Russ do it. But Proverbs 25 and 28 says, Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down and without walls. <clears throat> so, you know, I'm going to deal with in this series on controlling anger, but really not only controlling, but getting rid of. Let the Holy Spirit get, help us dissipate the anger get rid of the anger pour the anger out before him you know the altar is still is not just for to come cry to repent there's a, we can have an altar in our home or in our van or in our car or wherever we can have an altar where we get before the lord and allow him the anger to begin to pour out of us you know and i think the time to deal with it is when we're tired of being angry or when we're hurting people around us you know or ourselves and so we go on to the next verse. Um, it's Proverbs 16 and 32. He who is slow, slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his own spirit than one who takes a city. So there's a, <clears throat> there's a part where we allow the Holy Spirit to be our governor when anger comes on us. We, you all know what a governor is, something to, to, to stop us from going any further. Right? You put a governor on an engine, it keeps the engine from blowing up. You put a governor on a human being, it'll keep them from blowing up. So we allow the Holy Spirit to be our governor to keep us from blowing up. Now, I know nobody's blown up this week. Okay? And, and, but when we, we, we find out, when, when anger begins to get a grip on us, we're angry more than we think. Or more than we would like to say. You know, people do get stressed, but stress is usually another word for anger. Oh, I'm just so stressed. Maybe. Maybe anger. And again, I'm not saying this to, to, to condemn anyone. I'm just saying we just need to call it what it is. So that's one of the motives is to, to understand we live in an angry world and we're all affected by it. People young and old are wounded by anger. Um. Chances are, there's those of you in here, those watching you live stream, people text me, email me all the time. People are wounded by someone's anger. We're wounded. Um, there's a lot, lots of wounded souls walking around. Um, there's people that are bound by anger. There's people that are rage, what I call rageaholics. They don't, they're not, they don't drink, but they're rageaholics. They, they fly into a rage. Uh, a rageaholic is someone who they feel more comfortable in a rage and there's a blow up makeup cycle just like there is with alcoholism um you know again the other day i saw an instance i saw two people at the cash register i was behind and i could see the the wife's i could see her being wounded as he was screaming at her at the cash register in the store in front of me he was just the thing and again, this is my opinion. The things he, he was buying was selfish for him, and the things that he wouldn't let her buy, which one was a vacuum cleaner, they were struggling over the vacuum cleaner. The thing that he was yelling at her about made her put back in front of people. It, I could just see her being wounded. And it was then the Holy Spirit's like, you're on the right message. You know, you, this is this is it, this is... This the people. This is real. People are being wounded, and God has much to say about anger in the Bible. Much to say. I don't know why the church for years is so silent on the subject. Maybe because I'm not here to open a can of worms. I've dealt with it myself so many times, and still do. We anger grabs us, but it's something the Bible. God's not silent on anger. He says a lot about anger. There's, I have a lot of scripture about anger, more than I'm going to teach in this series. But I just. My heart is, I don't like seeing people wounded. God doesn't like to see people wounded with anger. 
there's adults, those of you in here, maybe you're still walking around with, with repressed anger because somebody wounded you. You was a wounded soul as a child because you lived with a rageaholic or you lived in a house where there was anger. The anger was dealt with in a wrong way. Anger brought fear and not respect. And there's a difference. And so, um, so I believe God wants, wants to, to deal with this in, in people's lives. Um, even people, I pray that if you've been wounded, that God would heal your heart. He would start to heal your heart. Or even if you live in an angry house right now, that God would begin to change it and heal hearts in there before there's any more wounding. Scars heal. You know, I mashed my skull in when I was younger, and I can still feel the, the crevice there. That's healed, though. But the things in my heart where I've been wounded by rage and by rejection... Those things are things God has had to deal with over years, a process of time. And I always say it's never too late to have a happy childhood, and it's not. But if we walk around hurting, we're going to hurt people. And none of us want that, do we? We don't want to hurt people. We want to be like Christ and be the love of God to people. We don't want to hurt people. I surely don't want to hurt Sandy anymore. I don't want to hurt my kids. I don't want to hurt anybody and I don't want to hurt any of you or anybody on live stream. I don't want to hurt you. So I have to, be, I have to deal with these, this anger thing that grabs me. Because it grabs us all. That's another motivation for doing this series. And here to bring healing. The Lord's here to bring healing. He wants to heal you. He's not here to beat you up for your anger. He's here to heal you. He's here to help bring change. That you can deal with your anger. Amen. People, even people watching, that we got young people, they're, they're stressed and angry and cutting themselves and, and, and doing all this stuff, angry at their own self. Self-hatred is a lie of the devil. Self-hatred is a perversion. It is. It's a lie of the devil. And God wants us set free. He don't want us hating ourselves. God does not hate you. And he doesn't want you hating you. You're his creation, made in his image. He wants you to like the person in the mirror. Amen. Not the externals like, hey, I want hair, you know, that kind of thing. No, he wants us to like the person we see in here. The eyes are the light of the body. And God wants us to look in the mirror and see the person that we see in there is full of light, and we like that person. God's not finished, but we like him. We like her. That's because God likes us. In fact, he loves us, right? He wants that. He wants that for us. Let's turn to John, John 8 and 32. And I, I memorized this scripture at, uh, also early on um, because we played a game, um, a Christian game with some friends. And they said, um, I, I pulled a card and it said, you have to um, memorize this scripture and say it out loud while jumping up and down. And I'll never forget it. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I had to jump up and down and say the scripture, so that's how I always remember it. But I, I said it already. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Some versions say set you free, but set or make, either one in the Greek, there is not just an immediate, but it, is a, a, it also implies a process. That as you know the truth about anger, you will be made free to deal with your anger. As you know the truth about anger, you will be able to deal with anger and not hurt yourself or hurt other people. Because we don't want to do that. Right? I know, and I know most of you, and I know, and, and those of you on live stream, I know you don't want to hurt any more people. And you don't want to be hurt. So truth makes you free. And, and, and freedom from the guilt and the shame of being angry. Anybody ever experienced that after a blow up? You, you, get, you feel guilt. And, and we're not here to bring guilt. We're here to see repentance and freedom take place. Okay? So I'm not, I'm not even really started yet, but I'm just kind of opening up. But so, so we, we're going to pray. I want to pray before we start, okay? I'm going to pray, and I wrote down some things we need to pray so, so you know ahead of time. We need to pray that the Holy Spirit would, would release us if we're bound by anger or rejection. We need to pray that God would shine his spotlight on our hearts, okay, in places that need healing and repentance. And you all, you on live stream, I want you to pray this too, that, that God would shine his spotlight, just while I'm preaching, that it would shine on your hearts 
to bring, to bring healing and to expose areas that need repentance and, and, and need change. And um, let's just all pray that it would start with just one step in all of us today. Can we do that? Just one tiny step today. Like this is not the whole enchilada, but let's just pray we just start here today and all of us take one step towards more freedom with anger, towards less road rage, towards, towards less, you know, getting upset and, and uh, upset at home and stressed out and hurting people. Let's just pray we'd all take one step, okay? Let's pray. Father, we thank you today that, God, you're going to shine your spotlight on the areas of our heart that need change. God, I feel my whole, my whole assignment from you today is to just to bring freedom, to bring freedom from guilt and shame, to bring freedom from pain, to bring to, for homes to be better, for, for dinners to be better together, for time, family time spent together to be better together, for workplaces to be better, for our businesses to be better, our schools to be better, everything to be better around us uh, that we have authority over. Because God, you're going to shine that light and change us. And we pray we would say yes to you and no to wrong anger, that you would help us to put a governor on it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to start with James 1 and verse 19. And um, these, these, this in Ephesians is kind of going to be our, what we're going to uh, use as, as scriptures for this series. That'll be the main text. James 1 and verse 19. It says, So then, my beloved brethren, my beloved brothers and sisters, so then, my beloved brothers and sisters, let every man... Be swift to hear, swift to hear, slow to speak. Two ears, one mouth. Remember, we got double the ears. We got double the ears, one mouth. Okay, we need to remember that. Slow to speak, slow to wrath, slow to pour out, slow to pour out. Um, You know, some people say count to 10. I say count to 1,000 if necessary. Amen. Amen. Walk around the block, you know. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Okay? So don't use, don't even use the Bible as a a springboard to pour out wrath on people. Or your thoughts to pour out wrath on people. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and the overflow of wickedness. What happens? When we can't hold it in no more, we overflow. We are, how many have ever been angry? I'm just going to do a little hand. How many have ever been angry and you said you weren't going to say something and you said you weren't going to say something and you said you weren't going to say something and you said you weren't going to say something and then it flew out? You ever do that? Okay, that's the overflow. I had it up, I had it up to here. My mom used to say, I've had it up to here. I've had it up to here, all right? And so that's when the overflow, that's when the overflow takes place, okay? The overflow of wickedness, and it says, then to receive with meekness. That's why I want to come to you in the right attitude, because I don't only want to receive it with, I want to give it with meekness, because I understand this is something I deal with also, and I don't want to, I don't want in any way, shape, or form be up here like I got it all together, but that that God's working on me, okay? Because I don't want the guilt either. And God, God wants to free us, not give us guilt, okay? So he said, receive with meekness. That's what we're doing today. We're, rec- we're all here meek. Y'all look so meek today. Tell your neighbor you look awful meek. You look meek today. We're all, we're all here with meekness receiving the word, okay? And, and when the word gets implanted, it'll change you. It, when it gets in you, it'll change you. What you own, you'll live by. That's what we're after. That's discipleship. We're after living by the word. And when we live by the word, we're not going to live by our emotions. We're going to live by the word, okay? So it's implanted in there, which is able to save your souls. You know, that oak tree down here in our yard is planted. When you, if you could see how big those roots are underneath, you would understand you're not just going to knock that tree over. We had a tornado here. I was a witness. It did not knock that tree over, but all the trees up that alley, it went, they went. Zach was here with me. Those, those, that tree stood because it was planted. You will stand if you're planted. Your house will stand if it's built on the rock. 
it will stand no matter how much anger has been in it. You can be free and your house will stand. Amen. And wounded souls can be healed. All right. He said it's able to save your souls. That word salvation is not just to get saved and get to heaven. That word salvation also means deliverance from a tight place. Anger creates tight places. How many get uncomfortable when it gets angry in your house? It's real uncomfortable. And those of us who are peacemakers or peacekeepers, we try to, you know, make it all better. And, you know, let's all laugh. Let's change this. Divert. Let's divert. Let's divert. Let's change the subject. Let's make it better. But anger can make it be a tight place. Anger makes our house smaller, doesn't it? It's a hard place to live. We want to run. Y'all just grin. I won't know it's you, okay? If you just, anger makes our house a tight place where we need salvation. We need salvation. There's whole houses today that need salvation from anger. We need salvation. There's, everybody's yelling at everybody. Uh, parents are yelling at kids about the kids yelling at the parents, and they're yelling that the, they're yelling. I, this is, I, I, I've had a lot of jobs before I was a Christian, you know, because I thought everybody was a jerk, but I learned I was the jerk. But anyhow, I had this job one time where I had to take, I had to take food to the, this, the, the ward where people that fought with each other got put, you know, and, and I'll never forget two guys, and it, it gave me a life lesson. There's two guys up there, and they're, they're arguing about being angry until they got in a fight. So I set their food down, and the guy goes, you angry? And he said, no, I ain't angry. He said, well, you're looking at me angry. I think you're angry. He said, I'm not angry at all. And he said, I'm telling you that you're angry. He said, I ain't angry. You're angry. He said, I ain't angry. Next thing you know, boom, they're in a fight, you know, <laughs> and so I'm out of there. But I'm thinking that's about how ridiculous most of us are, right? Let's laugh at ourselves. We get, we're, we're not angry. We're just stressed. We're just stressed. I'm just a little stressed. I'm not angry. I'm not yelling. Who's yelling? I'm not yelling. You're yelling. No, I'm not yelling. You're yelling. No, I'm not yelling. You're yelling. And it gets, right? I'm just stressed. Whew. Like a cat, you know, upside down on a roof, you know. <laughs> We're stressed. <clears throat> but, but it's not, listen, man, it's not stress. It's anger. It's anger, you know. And so we get, we should laugh because we need to laugh more than be angry at one another, right? And so... <clears throat> He, he says there that it will save us. It will save us. The, the word will save us from ourselves, from this anger. And how many of you know you, you go through seasons where you're more angry? And you can't put a finger on it. Did you ever, you ever just, and, and I look, when I get, start getting angry, I look at my self-talk. What have I been thinking about this week? What have I been telling myself this week? Who have I complained about this week? Who have I murmured about this week? What have I said about my house? What have I said about my family? What have I said about my job? What have I said about the people around me? And I'll find out where my anger came from. Because my, my stinking thinking and my self-talk has been trash talk. And so then it gets me stressed. Right? Y'all get stressed? Sure. He said... Uh, that we, what, what verse was I on? Where's I at, Russ? You got me 21? Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and, and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which they will save your souls, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. That's, that's what I'm saying today. Just one small step. If we just one small step today, I just pray we get our heads straight today and then move on, okay? Be, be doers of the word and not here is only deceiving ourselves. And we deceive ourselves at times when we say anger doesn't bother me. Just because we're Christians, we shouldn't get this idea. I'm, I hope I'm going to break this, this stigma that a Christian should never be angry. It's not true. We all get angry. It's an emotion. We all get angry. And, and I'm going to show you where it comes from. But, but we all get angry, so we shouldn't just say, oh, I, just stuff it, stuff it, stuff it. we got to deal with it, deal with it, deal with it. Amen? All right, so he says, if anyone's a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, and for he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. God just doesn't want you to look at it today, but he wants you to see. You know, we can look at stuff without seeing, and he wants us to see, and he said, he who looks in the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer, 
but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Amen. You know, we can bridle our tongue. Amen. Let me give you an instance. I've heard people, I've had people come, I just can't control my anger. Okay. Have you ever been yelling at your children and somebody calling the phone that you had to talk to? Mm-hmm. You better get that. Hello. <laughs> well, how are you doing? All right. Now, I'm telling you, right? Has anybody ever done that? Anybody ever had the ability to be yelling at somebody and stop? How about when the preacher pulls in the driveway? Huh? Yeah, Chad's waving at me back there. How about when the preacher pulls up and uh, how about when the preacher pulls up and you're throwing a fit? Doesn't everybody get nice? Yeah, everybody changes their tune. We have the ability to, con- to bridle our tongue, to control it. We just need to learn how to exercise that with the people we love right around us. Amen. Not just the people. See, to me, we, if, if we can do that, we're on our way. Right? If we can do that, we're on our way to healing because that means then we can do that with the people we respect in our home. But sometimes we just let it fly. We don't bridle our tongue. You all okay? You can say amen or oh me. Uh, You know, one man said, I like this. One man said, speak when you're angry and you'll speak the best words you will ever regret. Speak when you're angry, and you'll speak the best words you'll ever regret. That's a good quote, because I've done it. Because when you, when you, say, when you don't control it, when you don't let the Holy Spirit bridle you, and you control it and govern that thing, you will speak words that you will regret. Because why do people, why do you think when people argue, they bring up the past in arguments? Why do you think we keep digging up the past when we fight or have a religious discussion, however you want to put it. Why do you think we bring up the past? It's because there was a wound there. There was a place of woundedness. It wasn't the action. It was the wound that took place. Did you all ever get in a a situation where your relationships became about words you spoke? Well, you said, and you said, and you said. Can I tell you, there's trouble there. If, if somebody ever wants that, with the, the wants to go on exactly what you said, that means they want a contract with you. That's law. Grace looks at the heart of what, why'd you say it? The law looks at the words. Do you understand? That's why this whole thing about political correctness in our country The words, it's destroying our country because it's become about a contract of words. Doesn't matter what's in the heart, it matters that we say the right words. But really, God doesn't look at the words, He looks at the heart. Why are you angry? Why are you saying that stuff? Why, why Why would my husband or why would my wife keep bringing this up every time we have an argument? Because there's really a wound. There's a place of woundedness there. Y'all following me? People are, when we're wounded, see, when you get to the place, I don't like having relationships with people that hold me to every word I speak. Because I say things wrong. I say things I don't mean sometimes. I mean, I, I mean to say what I mean, but I just can't get out. You know what I'm saying? And if you've got a heart relationship with somebody, then you're, it's not all about, well, you said this and you said that. It's about why. Why did you say that to me? Because that wounded me. Or why did I say that to her? Because that wounded her. We get to the root instead of just trying to talk right. You see, we can have all the perfect political correct rhetoric we want, but if the heart of this nation doesn't change, we're in trouble. If God doesn't change our heart where people love people again, where the love of God doesn't see humanity as fallen, and we all need God, then then we're never going to have what God wants us to have. Same way in our family, if it all becomes about words, if you're fighting about words, you need to back up. And you need to say, where's the woundedness? Where's the, where's the hurt in here? Is this okay? So he, he tells us there that, that we will regret, in that quote, that we'll regret words. Let's turn to Ephesians, okay? Y'all handle a little more? I told you I'm just getting started today. 
So Ephesians 4, this is going to be another um, main text. I would suggest you just read Ephesians all the time. Verse 17, we're going to start there. And he says, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk or the rest of the world walks in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. This, this is what really bothers me about, this, this is what makes me want to bring change through the gospel in our society. People are past feeling. They're cal- their hearts are calloused. Y'all got calluses on your hands? Their hearts are calloused, you know? I, I know the, I was at the hospital um, recently and, and they, tried to, they tried to stick me and they're like, what do you do? Your hands are so tough, you know? That's their calluses. And, and people's hearts can get so hard that they get calluses. And we're, they're, they're so wounded that you can't... They're good at dishing it out. They're good at wounding other people to protect this calloused area. So they're, they're past feeling. They don't feel, but they want you to feel it. That's an area of woundedness. And so when we are, we're calloused, we're past feeling... We're blind. We can't really see what's going on. We're just living in protection mode. Okay, do you all know hurting people hurt people? Do you know those people that are around you at work or whatever, and you think, man, they're the most most mean, evil, whatever? They're they're hurt. They're wounded people. They're very wounded, and they're blind. He said, but you have not so learned Christ. So it's it's a this is a warning for us to not get calloused. We should not get calloused where God can't deal with us and people can't deal with us. He said um, that you have not learned Christ if indeed you have heard of him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct, your former conduct, which is the way we used to deal with road rage, the way we used to deal with anger, those things, we put that off and, and, and the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man not the angry man the new man that you put on the new man which was created according to god in true righteousness and holiness therefore put away lying let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor for we are members of one another be angry be angry and do not sin and there's the there's the hinge point be angry and do not sin. Be a, you Anger will grab you, but do not sin. There's the work. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Sounds like when we go to bed mad, or we let the sun go down on our anger, or we let it go 24 hours, there's a foothold for the enemy to come in. And it said, let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. It says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. No corrupt word. I always say this, if you can't see Jesus saying it, don't say it. That's a corrupt word. But what is good for necessary for edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers and bring grace to the situation. Bring peace. I pray today grace through the word is brought to your situation. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, there it is again, bitterness, wrath, anger, they're all brothers, clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. A good way to judge if you have anger or not is is there bitterness, is there wrath, is there anger, is there evil speaking or clamor coming out of your mouth? Because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. And be kind, be kind to one another, tender-hearted. When you're angry, your heart's not very tender. You're not very kind. It's true. I'm not very kind when I'm angry. I'm not very tender-hearted. Forgiving one another. Did, did, you know, even as God in Christ forgave you, and there's the knee buckler for me, that when I'm angry, 
I got to remember Christ forgave all my junk. Boom, that sends me to my knees. Because if I can remember, I remember, y'all. You, you didn't live in my head. I remember how angry I was growing up inside. I know what it's like to deal with guilt and shame and anger and rejection. I know those were my familiar friends. And I thank God that Christ forgave me. You see, you can't teach this to somebody that doesn't know Christ yet. They won't get it because if, if, if you've been forgiven, you're going to be forgiving. And then you can forgive yourself too. But if you've never experienced that forgiveness, it's, it's like talking to a blind person. But I'm saying God's here to set people free. Amen? Even on live stream, he'll set you free. So that we see that, that we're to put all this away and, and be kind and, under, and remember that we've been forgiven. Whew. We've been forgiven. And he'll forgive you again. And with anger, he'll forgive you again. And I've repented many times of anger. I've repented. That doesn't mean God's not working. It means he's not done. I mean, I've, I just, I've had to repent. Sometimes we have people we, we live close by, or we, a neighbor, can be a, uh, whoever, somebody at work. We may have to keep, can, keep forgiving and, and asking forgiveness because we blow up. We have to keep repenting. Say, God, I want to change. And he'll, he'll be faithful to change us, okay? So, so anger is not sin, it's what we do with it. Anger is an emotion. One man said this, and I had to really think about this. He said anger is a gift from God. It's a gift. I'll show you how it's a gift. It is a gift. You know why? When we experience anger, it should motivate us to change. So in that sense, it's a gift. Look, how many of you know 1 John 4 and 18? Turn there, Russ. It says, um, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God is love, right? God's not anger. He experiences anger, though. I'm going to show you a side of God a lot of people don't talk about, but God experiences anger. But God is love. Okay? So, so God is love. You can write that down if you're taking notes. And number two, God's holy. 1 Peter 1, 16. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy, God's holy. Holy means God has no sin. Okay, I'm just building a case here. God is love, God is holy, God has no sin. Okay, Psalm 7 and 11. Psalm 7 and 11 said God is a just judge. Okay, he's, 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 he's love, he's holy, he's a just judge, and God is angry with the wicked every day, or the sinner every day. God is angry with the sinner every day. Okay? So why is he angry? Why is anger a gift? God experiences anger because he knows that wickedness keeps a person from him. So God's angry because people are sinning and God's anger doesn't cause them to lash. God's not lashing out at anybody that's sinning today. He's not, I'm, oh, I just hate you. No. God's angry at the sinner because the sin separates the sinner from God. So, so his anger, God's anger motivated him to, for a remedy for the sinner. So in God's anger, because he's angry that sin is destroying people, sin destroys people. I don't care what you say. Sin in the long run will destroy people. And sin ultimately causes death and eternal judgment and hell, right? So sin destroys people. God is angry at the sin. So, so instead of punishing the sinner, he punished his son in our place. See, that helps me with my anger because it humbles me. Because God, in his anger, loved me. And his anger motivated him to give us a remedy, which was Jesus Christ who died on the cross so that we could be free of our sin and not separated from God. So God's anger 
motivated God to bring change to the earth through his son. We're getting ready to celebrate Christmas. I'll just throw that in. Emmanuel is God with us. Why did Jesus have to come? Why did Jesus have to come? Is because God was angry at the sin. And he, he knew the sin would destroy us, so he sent his son. You get it? That his anger motivated him. Our anger should motivate us to change. Not only us, but things. When you think about it, I just wrote some, down some things. Every social reform ever in history, read it. Every positive social reform came through anger. The Reformation, Martin Luther was, was angry that the church was perverting the grace of God. And Martin Luther got angry enough to break away from the organized church and say, hey, the church is not living uh, through faith, through Christ and grace anymore, and we need to change. Civil rights movement, Martin Luther King, anger at racism, anger at, at people not being treated equal, that anger produced great change. Martin Luther King stood up and he, he caused a movement because of his anger. He did something good. Do you understand? We could go on and on. What we have now, I have friends who just, just are so angry about the sex trafficking that's going on that they have started moves. We have, we have students working at outside motels in the United States to try to free people from sex trafficking because they're so angry. It's such perversion that it brings change. The anger brings change. See, when, when we understand anger in form of, in God's eyes, our anger begins to be a motivation to change. When God begins to deal with our hearts, our anger can become a motivation for something good in our life. Amen. I hope you're getting this because I feel, I feel a Holy Spirit inside moving on me that when we understand God's anger, we will change. Why are you angry at yourself? When you understand, when you allow God to shine the light on that, you will get free. Free of your fear, free of your repressed anger, all that. You will get free. But you've got to let God deal with you. Amen. We've got to let God in there. Can you handle just a little more of this? God isn't anger. He just experiences anger. And his anger motivates him to do something. Okay? So he didn't destroy us. He set us free. Now, do you think that God sent his son... So you and I could be free so we could struggle with anger and rage in our homes the rest of our lives. No. If, he, if you believe that he saved you, then when you call on his name, when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, he died for your sins, he's raised from the dead, and you believe that and you confess that, and he saves your soul, and you're gonna, your sins are going to be wiped out, don't you think that he can deal with your anger? It's, we deal with anger the same way we deal with salvation. It's by faith we come to Christ and we say, Lord, I, I admit I'm not just stressed. I'm, I'm angry and I blew it. And in me blowing it, I feel really bad once again. And I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this sin. I'm tired of doing it. I see what it's doing to the people around me. And God, I want you to forgive me, but I want to change. I mean, just a simple prayer. And he'll begin to do what he did in salvation will come into your life with anger. You know, I get I get I get angry about kids being hurt, and that's why it motivates us to help kids. I don't like seeing kids wounded. I don't like seeing I, I just hate seeing their little spirits crushed. Can't stand it. It motivates me to want to do something. You know? That's why I just love to love on kids. People say, what's your angle, you know, doing all this for kids? It's because I just, I just don't want to see them hurt. I mean, that can't be bad, right? But you know where it comes from is anger. I get tired, I get tired of seeing people, kids jerked out of homes and, and kids, you know, all, all these things that are happening in our society. It just breaks my heart, makes me angry. That anger once says, don't just sit on your rear end, Mike, do something, you know? That, that's a good thing. So anger can, be, can bring positive change in, in not only in our lives, but the people around us. So we gotta, we got to come to the place. I mean, we're just starting today. we got to come to the place. we got to admit we're not just stressed. We get mad. We get angry. You know, 
And sometimes we get, get angry about the same thing over and over again. We've got to ask God to teach us how to be angry and not sin. Amen. You know, there's a way even with, with, with dealing with our children. There's got to be a way for us to be angry at our children, not doing what we want them to do and not wound them. Really. There's a way to do it. You can be calm and there can be consequences. But listen, the, the wounding has to stop. And if you're wounding, if people, if you're watching live stream or you're here and you're wounding the people around you, you're wounded. You know, nobody else is making you do that. It's just you. I mean, when we come to the to realization of that, when I came to grips with the fact that it was me, it's me, I'm hurt, I'm wounded, I've stuffed my anger. That's why I'm angry at everybody else. I had to come to that place. I'm tell, that's why I say I'm not up here like some high and mighty. I've been through all this. I'm still going through it. But I do know that there's a place where you, I had to humble myself and say, it's me. I was good at putting the blame on other people. It's me. And I got sick and tired being angry. I mean sick and tired of it. I quit looking for society to try to pat me on the back for be, everybody's angry. You know, everybody, everybody blows off, you know, blow off some steam or whatever. No, I quit, I quit doing that. I just, I came to grips with it that Christ who forgave me, Christ who forgave me, that God, God got so angry with my sin that he sent his son in my place. It just, it's still, I'm still thankful for that. It freaks me out. I just, okay, so I get mad and I hurt people. God, you get mad and you send your son. <laughs> There's something wrong with, if I'm a Christian and he's my God, then somehow I got to line up with him. And somehow I got to be Christ to the people around me. And it's not going to be by flipping people off and cut us off on the road. It just hidden. Or by screaming at our families. Or by evil communication pouring out. Just think every time evil communication pours out in your home, there's an arrow. There's a dart going somewhere. Wildfire. Y'all ever been to a shooting range? Look at the target. You know, there's... People get a bullseye. People go all around shooting all these. When our mouth flies, it's a weapon. And those bullets, we may never see where the bullet went, but, but the hole in somebody's heart is there. We may never find the lead, but the hole's there in some little wounded soul. And they grow up to be big souls that are like us, that are angry. And we say, oh, just the way I was raised. Well, maybe you were wounded, and you need to go back there and say there was a little bit something wrong with the way I was raised. Because I'm not doing a good job now. And I had to admit that. When I found the words coming out of my mouth that was said to me, to my child, it broke me. When words I said I would never say to anybody else in my anger that was said to me, when I said them and repeated them, and I, the Lord allowed me to hear what I was saying in my anger, and it broke me. And I was sick of it. And that was the start. So I pray today that, that this is the start of something good in our lives, live stream in your life. I pray it's something good. And if you're wounded, you got to deal with that first. You, you can't deal with anger until you understand if you're wounded first. If you're wounded, God wants to heal you. If you're watching me today and you're wounded, God wants to heal you right now. Not 10 years from now, right now. He wants to begin to heal you. He wants you to begin to deal with what's really in there and heal your heart. Okay? Can we all stand? <clears throat> I feel like I'm supposed to quit there. We take a moment and <clears throat> pray for live stream. If you're on live stream today, and, and I don't know if you, even if it's been cutting in and out, but you're here for this part, and you're wounded, there's anger in your home, 
There's anger in you. You're upset. Maybe you, you've got guilt and shame. Maybe you don't know the Lord. Maybe you're lost, and like that song, he's, he wants to make a way for you today. He has. Christ, come to him. And if you're lost and away from God, he wants, he wants to draw you. He's not here to, he's not angry with you. He's angry that the sin that separates you in today's time to deal with that sin. Allow God to forgive it. And I'm just going to say, if you're on live stream or if you're here, and you know that you've got sin that's separating you from God, God's not mad at you. And I just, I tell you, and I don't know why I keep going over this, but I just, God wants to wipe away the guilt from anger. And with, with him wiping away sin, he wipes away guilt. I mean, wipes it away. And you're not supposed to bring it back up. You're not supposed to keep beating yourself about it. But you're supposed to, to be free, that you can help others be free. If that's you on live stream, or if you're here, if that's you, I want, I want us all to pray this prayer together just, just for Christ to be in our life, okay? Say, dear Jesus, today I repent not only of anger, but of all my sin. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me, to come into my life, and free me. In Jesus' name, I call you Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for giving me and setting me free to walk a road where I'm free of anger and hurt. In Jesus' name, amen. Live stream, we just we pray for you and we bless it's opened your eyes today. And we will see you next week. And you can, you can text or email or whatever. If you've got a prayer request for this week, we'll be praying. We're going to continue this series. And I just pray it changes your home, your life, wherever you're at in Jesus' name.